half century ago, President John F. Kennedy made a striking observation. In his inaugural address, he said, for man holds in his mortal hands the ability to end all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. This is the great paradox of our time. On the one side, we have marvelous technologies. We have the internet, global connectivity. We've unraveled the human genome. We have nanotechnology. And with the power of these technologies, it makes it possible for us to foresee within our own era the end of extreme poverty, the control of disease, the success in the age-old battle against hunger. And yet that very technological success, if poorly guided, threatens our very survival. In President Kennedy's time and in his thoughts, he was thinking about the nuclear annihilation threat, one that still hangs over us. But in our time, we're deeply aware of the environmental threats caused by our own activities, climate change, pollution, the oceans becoming more acidic, the destruction of habitat, pulling down the rainforest, the loss of potentially millions and millions of species to extinction species that we depend on also for our own well-being and survival. I'm Jeffrey Sachs, director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, a university initiative that takes on the challenge of sustainable development. And I want to welcome you warmly to this course on the age of sustainable development. This concept of sustainable development, in my view, really is the theme of our age. And we should understand it in two senses. In one sense, sustainable development is a way of looking at the world, a way to understand this complexity of a now global economy, an interconnected economy, and one that impacts so heavily on the physical planet. And in another sense, sustainable development is a way to think about our human objectives. What do we want out of our economy? How should our societies best be organized to take a holistic view of our well-being? one that looks after ending poverty and promoting economic prosperity, but at the same time aims for social inclusion, meaning that that prosperity is widely shared, and also one that ensures that that prosperity, coming from our use of advanced technologies, protects rather than destroys the planet at the same time. In this course, we're going to look at sustainable development in three big ways. First, as a way to understand the world. How does the world economy work now in our age? Why are there still pockets of extreme poverty? Why has our society in the United States, in many parts of Europe, in China, and many other parts of the world, become less equal in recent years rather than more equal even though technology should be able to spread prosperity very widely. And what is it that we're really doing to the planet to be causing such dangerous changes in the climate, uh, in the ways that our ecosystems work, uh, and in undermining our, our very food supply? These are tremendously complex problems to understand, but we'll move from there to the question of how do we set goals to find our way through this morass? And how do we set goals to take on that great opportunity to end poverty, but do it in a way that protects the planet and ensures broad prosperity? And third, once we have those goals, once we've understood the basic dynamics, how can we achieve broad global objectives? What's the best way of organizing our economy, our policies, our global cooperation to actually achieve the sustainable development goals that we set? Well, sustainable development is a, is a compelling topic. It is the great challenge that we face. I want to welcome you to the age of sustainable.